y'all doing? <laughs> y'all love this place? I am glad to be here. I am getting a little older. My wife hates it when I say that, but I'm afraid it's true. <laughs> and as you get older, life has not prepared you for what happens to you. They don't tell you half the stuff. For instance, for some reason, I sweat more around my stomach than on my arms. But that's all. I get sweat stains on my shirt. I'm putting deodorant on my belly button. It's just weird. <laughs> Hair does all kinds of bizarre things. It stops coming out of my head, comes out of my ears and my nose. I was ready for that. You have to cut them. No one grows their nose hairs as a fashion thing. <laughs> I thought let them grow. They're gross, pal. You're old. Cut them. And then as men know, as you get older, you go to the bathroom more often. I'm getting used to this. But now every time we're out, my wife treats me like a two-year-old. Uh, Bill, do you have to use the restroom? <laughs> I think I'm okay. Are you sure? <laughs> Don't you think you should try? <laughs> Mirrors are not your friend. I hate looking in the mirror. Every time I look in the mirror, I go, oh my God, that's what I look like now. <laughs> this place uh, in New Jersey used to work, big casino, so it's romantic and everything. You get the room I stayed in, it's a round bed. Why that's romantic, I have no idea. <laughs> Mirrors, all the way around the room, all the way on the ceiling. <laughs> they think this is romantic. <laughs> it's like torture. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm a fat old guy everywhere I turn. I can't get away from it. I'm depressed just being in this room and the round bed's not helping. And you know, as you get older, people talk to you different. I mean, they say things like, you know, you're not as young as you used to be. Neither are you, nobody is. Why do I have to listen? There's another one like, you're getting up there. You're getting up there. I'm getting up where? Where am I getting? Closer to that? Great, thanks for bringing that up. My wife uses it. Whenever we buy a big item, like a couch or a bed and stuff, she goes, Bill, we have to get a good one. It's probably the last one we're ever going to buy. <laughs> that makes me want to go. <laughs> the whole time I'm out, I feel like dead man shopping. <laughs> Why don't we get a real cheap one so I can live longer? <laughs> the latest thing people say, especially doctors that I have the hardest time with, is this phrase, at your age. There's never any good thing to come after that. <laughs> no one says, at your age, and you hear something good. It's so, at your age, you know, you're probably going to hurt all the time. Yeah. At your age, you know, you know there's going to be no food you can eat that you like anymore. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what you can expect at your age, you know. I mean, there's no pleasure. You're just waiting for die at your age. You know? <laughs> I hate that phrase. Now there's always ads on TV for all these sexual enhancing things, you know. Viagra, Seattle. I mean, the side effects scared the hell. What's the one with a four hour? You know, consult your physician? I think in an hour and a half, I'm on the phone. The doc's been over an hour. I'm kind of concerned. <laughs> one of the side effects is delayed back pain. I think in four hours, not much of a delay. <laughs> How about immediate back pain? <laughs> but the worst one to go if you start to lose your sight, stop taping the drug. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about you, but I don't want to lose my sight. <laughs> I don't know, it's not just a sexual drug. That one drug for some kind of bronchitis, you get to the side effects, swollen tongue, swollen throat, trouble passing urine, and severe constipations. <laughs> I think I'll keep the cough. <laughs> you know I can't go to the bathroom either direction, you can't talk about it because your tongue's like, I can't go, help me! It's torture! And all these drug side effects is constipation and diarrhea. It's not constipation or diarrhea. <laughs> What's it like having those two things at the same time? Oh, help me! What is this? <laughs> and a lot of them have acne. This is acne. Every time I get a pimple now, uh-oh, a pimple. The constipation and diarrhea can't be too far behind. <laughs> Tell the doc I ain't taking that stuff. I've had enough of that stuff. <laughs> Swear to God, I saw one, one ad I think it was for. You got the side effects. One of the side effects was explosive bowel movement disruption. <laughs> I figured some guy with every orifice of poop coming out of every orifice of his body. And then he get a little further, on a rare occasion, death. <laughs> I died of an explosive bowel movement disruption. Who wouldn't? <laughs> All right, audience, ready for a good show? Another good friend of mine, very funny guy. He works all around Massachusetts, a whole bunch, because he's so funny and he does all kinds of good stuff. Comedy for a cure. You're going to love him. Please welcome Jerry Caruso. Give it up. Give it up for that man, 
Give it up for Bill Campbell. And my good friend Amy T. Funny, funny, funny. Uh, I'm Italian. Any Italians in the audience? Okay, these jokes will work with the four of you. Good. <laughs> I've been doing comedy for about, you know, 29 years, going on 30, and my mother, straight from Italy, has not seen one show. Do I get it? Ah. Oh. Oh. I said, Mama, come see me do comedy. She goes, no. I know, come and see you do stupid comedy show. I got my open up for Larry the Cable Guy, Lisa Lampanelli. I have comics for a cure. I'm doing good things. No. I said, why? She says, because of they laugh for you. <laughs> <laughs> So we grew up Catholic, okay, okay. Catholics here? Yeah? Oh, yeah. All right. You eight will get these jokes. Good. Um, <laughs> grown Catholics, great. We had everything in the house, pictures, the Bible, the cross, and everything. It went so deep, it, it went down to our basement, because we uh, third floor apartment, so we as Italians stored food in the basement. I don't know if anybody's like this, but we stored food, you know, just left and right, you know, but... Especially, and the only two things that we store is pasta and sauce. That's it, because we're Italian, right? <laughs> when it comes time for me and my brother to go down and get the food, the pasta and the sauce, what a challenge. Uh, three and a half flights of stairs, four doors, 19 locks, just to get to the cabinet with the pasta and sauce. Light shining down from heaven. Ooh. And above that cabinet, there are three <coughs> most influential people in Italian's life guarding the food. You can, you, you can figure this out, Jesus Christ, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and Frank Sinatra. <laughs> How'd you move out when you're an Italian man? I moved out at a very young age. I shocked my whole family when I was 40. It was tough. <laughs> but when I moved out, here's where the drama kicks in. My mother's like a no jetty, believes in no go. I said, Ma, I gotta go, I'm a man. No, I'd do anything good for you. I said, Ma, I got a nice apartment, I got a used car. I'm going to night school, I got a good job. No, please, no go, I do anything for you. I said, my luck on my leg, I'm moving upstairs. <laughs> Unbelievable. I have grandkids, I have four, okay? You know what I call grandkids? Payback, okay? Yeah. <laughs> this is why I call them, and I'm glad people agree with me. People scratch their heads, he's like, what are you talking about? No. Payback because I remember when my son and daughter were younger, they have a little bit of sugar, they're wild. My daughter got smart, but my son never learned his lesson. So come time for my son, one time he goes, hey, mom, dad, dad, you wanna watch my three kids? And they were 10, eight, and four. I go, of course. We're just gonna go out for two or three hours. I go, absolutely. And what do we do as grandparents for our grandkids? We spoil them. I gave them everything that begins and ends with sugar for three hours straight. Soda, candy, uh, 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 cereal, uh, uh, ice cream, whatever they wanted, three hours straight. Then my son gets home. By that time, they're in that sugar coma. So I told, uh, so my son goes, Dad, how was everything? He goes, do everything was great, let's do it again. So then I'm ready to go to bed, and my wife goes, aren't you coming to bed? I go, no, I'm waiting by the phone. <laughs> Half hour later, that phone rings. My son, Dad, what happened to the kids? They're off the wall, they're uncontrollable. My answer was, they were good for me. <laughs> I haven't seen those grandkids in a while. <laughs> I went to Walmart last weekend, like I usually do. I'm sure some of you do. And what do I hate? It's probably the same thing that you people hate too. Those self-serve cashiers. I'm my own cashier. So here's my adventure last Saturday. I go there, there's no bags. So the woman up front is staring at me. I says, I need bags. She goes, third door down in the stock room and get some for registers 14, 16, and 19. <laughs> Running down, getting the bags, I distribute them, everybody's happy. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy, I gotta get out of here. I rang my second item, it didn't come up. And I go, price check. She goes, aisle seven, lower down on the left, go check it out. I go, oh my God, I'm nervous, I go check out. By the time I come back, folks, at a Walmart fest, badges all on me. I'm on Walmart radio tomorrow, and I find out I'm employee of the month. So. <laughs> People ask me, uh, you do a lot of charities, because uh, my group is called Comics for a Cure. And Amy has done shows for me, Bill has too. And I like helping people out, you know, just a way to give back. But what I do do is very special to me. Every month I go into Hope Lodge in Boston, give them a comedy show for the cancer patients, and it's really cool. I meet some of the nicest people. Those people, besides police, fire, EMT, and veterans, they're our heroes. People who are fighting 
uh, debilitating diseases. So it's amazing just to see them, okay? So, oh, you can clap. That, that's okay. <laughs> I meet some of the nicest people, and they, I, I love to entertain them, and they're happy. But this little old gentleman, uh, Oscar is his name, a little Italian guy, he says, Jenny, you tell him one of my jokes on stage? You go, of course. So this is Oscar's joke, which I think is one of the best clean jokes I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's driving a cab, beautiful nun in the back seat. He keeps looking in the back seat. Beautiful nun goes, my son, is there a problem? You keep peering at me. He goes, no, sister. Just see you're a beautiful nun. I've always had a fantasy to kiss a beautiful nun. I'm so sorry. She goes, remove your hands from your face. This could happen if you meet two of the qualifications. He goes, what's that? She goes, you must be single and you must be Catholic. He goes, oh my God, I'm both. <laughs> well, he stopped the cab, went in the back seat. She gave him the most long, essential five minute kiss. He was in heaven, he couldn't believe it. Gets in the front seat, starts bawling his eyes out. The nun goes, my son, do I detect tears? He goes, yes, I'm so sorry I lied to you. I'm not single, I'm not Catholic, I'm married and I'm Jewish. Uh, she goes, that's okay, my name is Kevin, I'm going to a costume party. <laughs> Such a great show. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> so I, I've done, some people say, what's your most you know, uh, strangest show you ever did? And in fact, it was a synagogue. So six years in the business, 1999, I did a synagogue. I don't know what to expect. I'm nervous, I get there an hour earlier. The woman goes, what's the matter, Sonny? You look nervous. I go, I'm nervous because I never did a synagogue. Don't worry about it. We love to laugh. Uh, entertain us and we'll embrace you. I go, oh, good. What's the big secret? She goes, Jewish jokes. I go, I don't get any Jewish jokes. You got an hour, go write some. <laughs> Ran out to the car. Folks, I came back with these three jokes. First joke was, I walked in, they says, would you like a yarmulke? And I go, I got a Toyota, I'm all set. <laughs> Second joke, I compared Italians to Jewish people. I go, Italians people like the name Sal, Jewish people like the name Saul, they nodded their heads. Italians like meatballs, Jewish people like matzo balls. And I said, oh yeah, you're right, you're right. I said, Italians have famous entertainer, Frank Sinatra. Oh my God, they went into the golf club, beautiful voice, blue eyes. And I was stumped, I go, well, Jewish people like famous entertainer, Frank and Stein. <laughs> Think about it, it is funny. Um, so, uh, people always, oh yeah, yeah, oh, well, well, what's the third thing? Oh yeah, any Beatles fans here? Beatles fans? Yeah. I did a hard day's night in Jewish. This is oh. how it goes. It's been a hard day's night. And I've been working like a dog. It's been a hard day's night. Not another synagogue. <laughs> but when I get home to with you, <laughs> I'll split this matzo in two, and everything will be all right. When I'm home, my little is realized. <laughs> when I'm home, is there a candle to light? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> As a comic, does anything bother you? Go, yes, classic rock. Look, I love classic rock, but when I was 18, they were in their 20s and 30s. How old are these bands now trying to make a comeback? Oh, 50s, 60s, Mick Jagger and Eric Clapton turned 78. Come on. So I think they should change their words around because stop singing about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Sing about the truth. No sex, meds, and social security, right? <laughs> So here's a few songs I think uh -oh. we should change the words. <laughs> the Eagles. On a dark desert highway, Grecian formula in my hair, that strong scent of Bengay rising into the air. Up ahead in the distance, I see a shimmering light. My head grew heavy and my sight grew dim. I was low in Geritol that night. Come on, right? <laughs> Meet low, you took my dentures out of my mouth. <laughs> Either Bob Seger or Metallica could do this oh, one, no, no. right? As I walk down to the mailbox, what do I see? A coupon for some denture cream, a card from the ARP. <laughs> so I say to myself, you're elderly. <laughs> well, here I am. I've got to go again. <laughs> here I am. While I'm up on the stage, there I go in my adult diapers again, and I know it's all day. <laughs> Elton John, 
She got a saggy boobs, <laughs> corrective shoes, and she has a walker to keep her in line. She ba ba better get the pens. <laughs> One more, Bill? <laughs> yes? Oh. I always do this with every crowd. You guys are a nice crowd. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Amy. Remember the mamas and papas. I have a song you. Help me sing. It's not difficult. All you have to do is when I raise my arms, you go. Ba -da 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 -da. It's about a car that I used to own that I hated. So when I put my arms down, you stop. Capiche? All right, here we go. Ba -da 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 -da. With a warranty. Oh, Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyundai this morning wouldn't start for me. Oh, Hyundai, Hyundai, send those missing parts to me. Every other car, every other car, every other car, every other car I had was fine. Oh, yeah, every other Monday, every other Wednesday, it's in the shop. Most of the time, Hyundai, Hyundai. Guys, you're still doing it, folks. Take it back, please. Uh, sound like Jay Z on acid. Hyundai, Hyundai. Joke from the Japanese. That's my time. I'm Jerry Cruz. Good night. God bless you. Sponsor Ali Ludwig at Remax Triumph Realty. Please <laughs> buy and sell your house with her, and we're gonna take a quick break. My daughter's gonna kill me. Why? <laughs> this whole thing, Comics for a Cure, which he goes in and raises money for causes, right? Yep. Am I right, Jerry? Yep, you want to say anything groups. about that? Yeah, Comics for a Cure has been around since 1994, and we've done shows ever since nonstop, uh, whether it be a, a local show like a house fire or, or a family if someone needed surgery, or even nonprofits like uh, American Cancer Society, MS, and it, it's so much fun. I love doing it. Good way to give back, you know, so. And he just did a movie, right? Oh, yeah. A movie, and what is the other thing you said? Commercial. A commercial, same week, same month? Uh, spread out, so oh. last <laughs> July, I was a, a mobster. I know, talk about <laughs> typecasting. <laughs> Uh, for a movie called Poor Paul. I'm in it for five seconds and that's it. But it's my credits, I was at the top of the list, so I'm not gonna argue. And recently I did a commercial with WWE, the Wrestling Foundation, and we, I did it with uh, Cody Rhodes and um, The Miz. And first three seconds, that's okay. You can watch, that is cool. Again, three seconds, if you look at the commercial, you see me go in for a coffee and come back, and, I, and everybody goes, I saw you, I saw you, what else did you do? I go, uh, that's it. So. But a credit's a credit's a credit. All right, there you go. So how you been? How you doing? Good. Busy, good. I can't complain. Like I said, I'm busy back. Busy is good these days. Yep. Not all of us are busy. Like I said, I'm back in the Hope Lodge, which I love. It's one of my favorite places. And I'm doing a big veteran show at uh, Veterans Incorporated in Worcester in June. So I can't wait. I just love to get back. It's, it's God gave me these talents. I mean, I gotta throw them out there and use them. And if I'm making people laugh, that makes me my day. Except for my mother, you know, she, <laughs> she, she said, I got into comedy. She goes, you stupid. I go, why? Nobody laughed at you. I go, oh, my God. So I said, thanks. Thanks for that. Did your mother ever see you do it? 
Never saw you. My brother saw me for the first time because, unfortunately, my, my mother passed. Oh, uh, you know, she's 97, so, you know, she had a really good life. She battled dementia at the end, but and, and they, at the eulogy, everybody was saying something. It's like, I got to go up there. So I, so I try to lighten up because everybody's in tears. It's like, she had a long life. She had a great life. And I said, you know, Ma, and I, I, I just looked at where she was laying. I go, you know what? You taught us a lot. You taught us that bricks and cement are not only used to build a house, it's to sink people that screw you. you know? <laughs> and I said, a wooden spoon is great for making sauce, but it's also a weapon, you know? So, but I made people laugh, and I did say, I missed her, and I loved her, and all this stuff, but I just wanted to bring humor into it. It's the first time that my brother saw me ever, he goes, you were so funny. He goes, I was crying. I go, what happened to the 29 years I've been doing it? He goes, ah, he goes, you know me. And it's like, you know. You know, my mother never saw me do it. My mother and father. Really? No, they passed away, I think. Uh, Get a good seat from heaven, no? Maybe? Well, they could let me know how I'm doing. Yes, <laughs> that's true. No, I, it's all good, you know. Uh, now, my sister comes see me, my wife comes see me. Tonight she couldn't come because she asked me, you got any new material? I go, no, she goes, I'm all set. So. <laughs> She's honest, you know. And I got this lazy eye thing, you know, nobody knows, but I got a little lazy eye, I still got it. I remember meeting my wife, said, honey, no surgery, no meds, no ophthalmologist, no nothing, take me out of She goes, I do. And we've been married uh, 39 years, I'm going on 40, God willing. Oh, thank you. But she forgets about the lazy eye. Last night I had a show, I hugged her, kissed her bye, told her I loved her. She thinks I'm seeing someone on the side. It's a terrible. <laughs> People always laugh at my disability. I love it. So. The, the only time my wife likes to come to a show is when my kids are coming. Ah, see, that's They're my coming and she wants to be part of it. Yep. My wife says, who else is going to be there? And I name people. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but if it's family, you're right. I don't always like her to come, though. It's work. You know, you're working. You know, I don't. And, and you want to impress her. Then you're looking at her going, she didn't laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try this one. And then you're looking directly at her. I don't really her. try to impress her. But in my case, it's someone over to the far right. So I'd say, how you doing, sir? And she'd say, good. It's like, you know. It's like, you know. But yeah. How much time do you have on the eye thing? It's pretty I, fun. I get, I get a few things. Yeah. You, know, you know, I get a few things. You know, it's like when my uncle, I told my uncle, I, I, you know, my family, I'm going to, same thing, no meds, no surgery, et cetera. And in the back room, my uncle yells at me, Jerry, right behind you. By the way, we're over here. <laughs> <laughs> we got to wrap it up. This is Jerry Caruso. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Funny guy, check him those five seconds in those movies. Yeah, five seconds. And take a close look, you don't want to miss it. <laughs> He's a funny guy. One more time, Jerry Caruso. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's our 11 million show. We're really happy about it. We're pretty excited. And I don't know when we'll be back, but uh, thank you, audience. You're the greatest.